This time on the show, Jen Cutter joins us for a little Nintendo DSi XL hacking. Mubix is in the house with Metasploit 101. Shannon has a killer tool for your next PC build, and none other than Prono Bozo in the house. Yeah! I'm Darren Kitchen. You're watching Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. Go to Assist Express and click it or tick it. Today, guys, we have the pleasure of being joined by none other than Prono Bozo himself. Prono Bozo, thank you so much for uh, having us. Uh, can I call you Prono? Well, you've got so many great toys here. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what this equipment does, how it makes the music. Like, uh, what's your favorite bit of kit? Okay. Well, what about this guy here? Is, is, is this analog? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's what I'd think, because it's got, like, the knobs and stuff, so... Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your new album, Hackwave. You just finished it a while ago. That must be a great feeling to, to have that complete. It goes out there. Y you listen to that back. I don't know. How does that make you feel? No, that, that's not disturbing at all. Um, thanks. So is there like a, like a Mrs. Prono Bozo? Like a, you know, with like a little bow or something? No? Yeah, maybe? Little, little Prono Bozoettes? Little, little Prono Bozlings in the future? No? Anything? <laughs> Okay, so uh, like, what do you do outside of making music? Do you um, hack, play video games, cook? I, I can see you playing video games. You kind of like a Dig Dug guy, Defender. Oh no, I heard your Tetris song. That's right. So you got you got to be a big Tetris fan, right? I I mean, well, what's your favorite Tetris block? Everybody's got to have a favorite block, I guess. Like you, you like the L ones? Like it said L? Or like the J? L little Z ones? I'm just gonna, like, like give me a, a sign if maybe you like the, the really vertical one that you never get and you always need. The, you know, the, the tall one. I like that one. Okay, well, um, you know, thanks so much for having us. Uh, this was great. It's it's so cool to get some sort of like insight in, into the mind of of Bernabozo here. Um, so where can people go if I don't know they want to find out more about the new album Hackwave and um, and and the rest of your music? Is there a website that they can go to? Okay. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Prono Bozo, thank you so much, and um, yeah, that was phenomenal. This week's trivia question is, originally running on the PDP-11 and incorporating elements from BSD, this closed source version of Unix was licensed to manufacturers by Microsoft, yes, Microsoft, in 1980. Enter for your chance to win a premium, deluxe edition, authentic, animated GIF recreation, or some brand new Killer Hack 5 stickers. I don't know, it's your choice. And good luck, I'd like to thank one of our sponsors. Today I'm registering the nomadmonkey.com and setting up a blog to highlight the adventures of this plush primate as I motorcycle across North America. And as you know, I am a big fan of domain.com's low prices and quality service. They really are the easy and affordable way to get your site online. So with my site registered and deluxe hosting plan set up, I've head over to the hosting control panel under the My Services tab. Here I find the application vault where I can get one-click installs of popular open source software. There's plenty available, from blogging to collaboration, galleries and e-commerce, wikis, and more. I'm fond of WordPress, so I'll select it and click Install. 
then choose the domain and select my options like the install URL and password. Next finish and there you go, my blog's online. And any application Vault software can not only be installed, but also upgraded in a similar fashion, taking the headache out of platform management. And best of all, you can experience the fast DNS and solid hosting of Domain.com while getting 15% off at checkout when you use coupon code HAK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com All right, it's makeup time. You guys sent me all kinds of hate mail saying, hey, your stuff didn't work or you did it wrong or you didn't actually show it. Well, this is makeup time. Right now I got an enterprise set up. 80 is only allowed out. 80 and 443 is only allowed out through the firewall. There's only, there's a DMZ. You have to, that's the only thing you can hit. I have the SQL server behind the firewall like I had before. The web server on the DMZ. The client host with the domain admin logged in and the uh, domain controller all just like you'd have in an enterprise it's uh, all patched by the way uh, so there are no remote exploits that i'm aware of uh, on these windows side i don't have adobe installed haha -ha joke there anyways so we're going to kick it off with um, so some basic sql injection now this is uh, a pen test type scenario. So I'm trying to slam a whole pen test week, uh, days, year long pen test into like six minutes. So I'm going to go fast. I'm not going to show you SQL injection. I'm just going to show you the cool tool SQL Ninja. So SQL Ninja um, takes a configuration file for its stuff. It's a really easy look through it. It's all documented. So I'm just going to go and hit it. F to, for the config file, M for the mode you want to hit. We're going to test to see if SQL injection is there. Cool, let's rock. We hit it. We're going to hit a Metasploit module. Now first, SQL Ninja has a, a caveat. It, it executes the payload. Um, it pushes a binary and executes the payload before it runs multi-handler, before it runs the Metasploit handler, uh, if you're doing a Metasploit payload. And that's not the best way to do things because the, the payload will uh, time out before it gets a chance to start the handler. So you're kind of uh, in a race condition there. So what I like to do is actually start MSF console first, also because I like having control over it. SQL Ninja um, runs MSF CLI, which has a, a much more limited uh, set of tools that you can, or, or like things that you can do. You can't background, you can't background uh, MSF CLI. You can't, well, let me take that back. There are probably ways to do things, but I don't know them at the current point in time. So let's just start off with MSF console. Now I made it of a lot of resource files. Resource files are, are simply step by step, like do this, then this, then this. It's basically a bash script for Metasploit. Um, HD put a, HD Moore, the creator of Metasploit, put out an awesome post about how to do Ruby scripting in, in, in um, resource files, but this is the only ones that I'm using are the really ba are really basic step by step no Ruby involved. So my first resource file is to get the multi handler ready for the SQL Ninja payload. Do -do -do. So that's resource temp, and our first one is handler. All right, as you can see, it starts up the reverse HTTPS hit payload multi handler. It says exit on session to false because we don't want it stopping after we get our first interpreter session because we want more all right then 135 is our local host local port 443 like i said only thing allowed out and the great thing about this is since the sql server and the web server are disjointed they're not on the same box i'm actually getting inside the dmz via a sql injection problem in the web server so i'm stepping through it and then coming right back out now now that that's running I'm gonna do my SQL Ninja. Whoa! Now I've edited SQL Ninja a bit so that it says reverse HTTPS instead of reverse HT, uh, TCP. This is because of protocol analyzers. A lot of um, a lot of enterprise networks these days have protocol analyzers on their firewall and says if this does not look like HTTP, drop it. 
on port 80. If this does not look like HTTPS, drop it on port 443. So we get around that using the reverse HTTPS payload. Now, SQL Ninja doesn't have it by default, but it's Perl. You change two lines of this thing and you now have the correct payload you want to use for this. Tell it the um, reverse HTTPS, tell it the port, we get it going. Now this takes a bit because what it's doing is actually pushing via SQL queries, via the SQL injection, about 64 to 1,000 bits of data. I'm not exactly sure how much, but per query. And it has to do all these queries and it has to wait for the responses. And then it has to check them. So this takes a while. And even on my local box, it's going to take a while. So uh, in SQL Ninja 0.25 just got released, it's 10 times faster, but still slow. So be patient, it'll get there. Just stick in there. The cool thing about it is it writes the, a, a file called a, a SCR or screensaver. You all know what that is. Um, and then it changes it to an executable and runs it, which is just awesome. So we're done. Cool, let's hurry up. Trying to get all this in. Trying to get domain controller all in one hit. Here we go. Converting script to executable. Let's go Ninja. Transferring control. Now, it's saying transferring control to MSF CLI and it's trying to bind to the port zero, um, 443. But, as you can see on the other, on the other console, we already got a session. This is because it executed the, the payload before it started MSCLI. Now, a little quirk in the, in the Perl, you probably can fix it yourself, but this is how I got it done. So we have our first session. Cool. I'm not going to even go in there. Don't have a need, because I already know what, um, what the local IP range is. It's 10 network. Now, you can do that easily by going into Meterpreter and typing IP config. Not an issue. You can see the local network and start doing enumeration. I'm trying to condense this in so I have my resources files already set up. Now, PS exec, I already told you guys about this one. Uh, what I did on this uh, session, what I hash dumped, um, found a local workstation that I wanted to target it, and got the IP and the hash. So I'm going to hopefully have, well, I know, hopefully have the administrator password the same thing on all the boxes now this is very common in enterprise networks where they have a local admin the exact same password across the board it's a really difficult one but hashes don't care it's still a big ass hash excuse my language let's kick it ah maybe not let's kick it now bada bing bada boom it's running, and as soon as it says uploading payload, you know you're good. So the cool thing about this one is that we now have a interpreter payload or a interpreter session on a workstation. These a workstation is more likely to have someone logged in, probably an admin of some sort. Well, out of the tens of thousands of workstations, you might actually have to look around for the domain admin. But um, if they're all workstations with the same administrator password, you should be good. So this takes a second to go. All right, we've officially passed the hash. We used the, uh, the hash for the administrator password, and we're, we're on the second one. Sessions, I, two. All right, next is token passing. To do that, to find out um, what tokens you have available, you use incognito. Incognito is a module that attaches on, or DLL attaches onto uh, interpreter just like PRIV and standard I.O. or STD API, standard API. Um, these all are the, the modularity pieces of Meterpreter. So in the modular Metasploit, in the modular payload set stagers, there's also modularity there. So this thing is, Metasploit is gigantic, and it's really great how they put it up. So incognito, back to it. It's real simple. List tokens is the command. You can find out more by just doing a question mark and hitting enter. Um, tech U for users. Uh, I probably said list tokens. There we 
There we go. We can see that Contoso J Doe is logged in. So impersonate token. Now you have to do the double slash because it's Ruby. Crazy stuff. Cool. Now we are Jane Doe. I'm going to assume you did some research and looked around and found out that they're domain admin by some net, easy net commands. Next, I'm going to I'm going to drop to a shell. Now you can do that with X shell. Let's see if shell has options. Oops, that still worked. I don't know if it uses token, so. Uh, I'm not sure if the shell command actually uses the current token that we've impersonated, so I'm going to just use the execute command. You can do either, they both do the, about the same thing. T for token. So T is token, use the current token, C is channelize, I is interact with the channel. H mean, uppercase H means that hide it, don't show it on the screen for someone to see as they walk by or are using the X thing. And we don't want JDO to look. So, you execute. Now there are like, there are commands inside of incognito that tell you, hey, uh, add user, add group, add local group. Those are awesome locally, but the problem with them is that you have to specify an IP if you want to do remote. With the net commands, you can do a slash domain and add it to the domain um, without knowing the domain controller's IP. Net user Bob. Let's do P A S S W O R uppercase D1 add domain. So we're going to add this to the domain, then we're going to add it. So we're doing all this on the command line, and we're going to next do psexec and get the domain controller, hopefully, if I can hurry up. Let's change our domain from hacker to do, 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 do. This is what a resource file looks like. So Bob, change that. Hopefully this hurries up. All right, cool. We have added a user add or net group all right our next one is net group domain administrators if i can type right all right domain admins <laughs> dummies cool now we have a domain admin now we exit that shell drop back load our resource resource on the temp directory. All right, bada bing, bada boom. You, you know, it's done. We have now gone from only web access to SQL injection into uh, an SQL server that's inside the network, popped over to a workstation via pass the hash, did a token passing deal with the domain controller to add a user and um, add them to the domain admins, then PS exec with our new domain admin with our password that we have. So we've gone from, I don't know why that's not working, but as you can see, it can dump hashes. So all the way from workstation to domain controller using token passing, adding a user to our domain controller dumping hashes. Well, sort of, because this thing failed for some reason, but we'll continue on. It worked, it, we got there. We have command execution on a domain controller via this small SQL injection. We have only three connections out there, fully formed HTTPS connections, and hard to discern between all the other stuff. So that's Metasploit's awesome power and I'm only still scratching the surface. Thanks. Ha ha, now you can't email me shit. Because it worked well. I couldn't down patches. You can email me that. Feedback at halftime.org. Peace. Guys, it's a fact. Men are less likely than women to buckle up. In fact, in 2008, 66% of male drivers and 74% of male passengers killed in passenger vehicles 
were not wearing their safety belts. Don't become a statistic, wear your freaking seatbelt. Especially at night, when two thirds of drivers who die in accidents aren't buckled up. You may be a safe driver, but you don't know who else is out there. And it's not cool to not wear it. Now the police will be out in force over Memorial Weekend. Hundreds of state and local law enforcement, as well as highway safety officials across the nation will be participating in Click It or Ticket 2010 from May 24th to June 6th. They'll be out looking for you day or night. So make sure everyone buckle up. All right, picture this. You're building your brand new Windows box and you've set up your OS, you'd installed all of your drivers, possibly with double driver from a couple of weeks ago, one of those segments. I know you remember that segment, right? And then you installed dozens and dozens of programs, all those essentials that you have to have on every single Windows box, no matter what. This consists of going to the website, downloading hopefully the latest version, and then clicking next, 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 I agree to some crappy EULA, and then saying no to the toolbar, and then eventually finishing and restarting your computer. It takes forever, so not anymore. In the time it takes for me to show you this demo, you'll have your brand new box completely set up with software essentials. No next, no EULAs, no toolbars, no headache. So let's check out the tool Ninite. Ninite is an online service which bundles most of your favorite software packages into, well, one big bundle. The single setup package installs all of your selected software without any nagging toolbars and without having to click agree to a whole bunch of EULAs that well, you don't read anyway, so what's the point of that? It's fast and easy, and it downloads the latest version of your software packages in either 32 or 64-bit. And while Darren's on the road on his Hack Across America trip going to San Francisco, oh, so jealous. God, I totally want to go out to San Francisco and party right now. Oh, yeah, we've gone ahead and set up a tiny version of the Hack5 Cloud Lab on our computer over here. So let's check out how to set this up. Using GoToAssist Express, I've gone ahead and logged on to my brand new XP VM and using Internet Explorer. Oh, I know, don't tell me, I know. I'm gonna go over to ninite.com and go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna check a few software packages. Let's see, I'm gonna choose Chrome, Skype, VLC, uTorrent, of course. I love you guys. TerraCopy and Putty. All right, now click Get Installer and your custom package will begin downloading. Double click, preparing setup. Okay, here we go. Yay! Ninite is now downloading the latest versions of all of my software packages and will begin installing each one one by one. Now there are a couple couple of little important tidbits that I wanted to add, so let's go ahead and check those out. All right, important points. Yes, I know Yum and Apt do this and more on Linux, but let's face it, this is a Windows machine and anything that makes this a less of a headache for me is an A plus in my book. So yeah, it's awesome. Also, there's a pro paid version, which comes with local caching. You can do offline installers, and it also has this thing called silent mode but it's $20 a month. So it might be really good for the corporate workers who manage a whole bunch of computers and need to save a bunch of time and use this kind of stuff. But for me and for everybody else, it, the free version is great for personal use in my opinion. So what are your thoughts? Does it save a bunch of time or is it a huge time waster? Is this a good program or not? Email me at feedback at hack5.org and let me know. I like to know what you guys think. And yes, we do read all of your emails. And last but not least, I would like to thank our wonderful sponsor, GoToAssist Express, for making this snubs report possible. Their computer, your brain, how do you get the two together without wasting time and money traveling? Use GoToAssist Express to view and control your customer's computer online so you can fix the problem on the spot. Save time and money on travel. Satisfy customers quickly and efficiently, then move on to other tasks. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. That's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. Find more great tips like these at revision3.com slash gotoassist express. Cheers, mate. This is uh, quite the view. Mm. 
Yeah. So you see the penguins in the halves last night? You know, I, I, I thought it was um, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Moose hut's pretty good. <laughs> That about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but first, do you think you have the Technolas like Kim W with their sexy notebook skin, which is awesome? Make sure to send your photos over to feedback at hack5.org and who knows, maybe we'll show off your photo next week. Hmm. Also, we're conducting a survey for additional information about our viewers and we would love to have your feedback. Just takes a few minutes, go over to revision3.com slash survey to take the survey and thank you so much for helping us in advance. After you've completed it, you'll get exclusive, an exclusive look at a behind-the-scenes montage of Revision 3 going on a trip up to New York City, which was edited by Hippie Glenn. Very cool. And last but not least, our location-based social networking crazy friends over at Revision 3 are in a huge frenzy over this thing called Mizo. Are you a fan of Hack 5? Which obviously you are. And do you use Mizo on your iPhone, or maybe you don't? Maybe you need to go check it out? Mm -hmm. I think so. It's awesome. You can unlock exclusive Hack 5 badges and you can win special prizes. Just go over to gomizo.com and download Mizo and start checking in. It's that easy. Until next time, I'm Shannon Morse. You're watching Hack 5. Remember to trust your Technolas. Yay! We're done. Ready, record! This would have been so much better with a whiteboard. Why didn't you give me the whiteboard, Darren? It's fucked up. It's messed up, dude. So that about wraps up this week. Uh, <laughs> this whole week. Don't stop recording. I got this. Metasploit. <laughs> Metasploit presents Movix 101. <laughs> Let's start over.